This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Yeah, it's about time we do that. Wow, it really is the president. Yes, to think we saw him alive just a few days ago. Make sure he's not wearing a fake beard. <laughs> <laughs> that would make this a presidential assassination, right? This is a big f that's a bit flashy for an assassination. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Okay, let's examine the mustard first. There are no visible external wounds, but it's clear that he's already passed away. So then, I guess he really did get stepped on by a... A, a monster? <laughs> that's impossible. Huh? Don't the president's clothes look a bit dirty to you? Indeed, there appears to be some sort of yellow stain. I bet it's the monster drool! Kay, please be more serious. We'll need to have forensics take a look, closer look at the stain. He had a really good time eating hot dogs. He <laughs> just spilled so much mustard. So, this was the state of the body. I should make a note of it. Crime scene notes jotted down in the organizer. His cheeks look a little yellow, too. What's this white thing? Wait, is this a bone? Looks like we got a new case on our hands. It looks less like a bone, and more like some kind of a horn. Do I have anything in my evidence that could tell me what this horn is? <sighs> I'm sure we do. We got the poster of Muzilla who has horns. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't this horn belong to that monster, Muzilla? You're right! It looks just like it. Maybe it's a prop for the film? Based on the size of the horn, the head should be quite large. I wonder how it ended up here. I'm sure we'll find out if we ask someone on the staff. Hey, Penny. About this horn, have you ever seen it before? Huh? That's Muzilla's horn. It's a model we made to use in our ad campaign. Where was it? It was on the ground by the back entrance. That's strange. Mozilla's head should have been stored on the store on the studio roof. I suppose the head would have to be rather large, wouldn't it? Yes. It's not as big as the real thing, of course, but it's still quite large. Look, you can see it from here. Oh wow. See, it's right there. It certainly is large. But why is there an extra horn? Shrek extra large. Or is that broken off the horn? There sure are- Oh, there sure are a lot of interesting people or- th People and things around here. <laughs> it's the equipment we use for filming. The Mozilla costume and the camera crane. They really are treasures. I'm getting kind of excited! It's possible that some of this equipment was used in the crime. I'd better take a closer look. Can we examine the stepladder now? Maybe not. Do, do, do. I wonder what this iron pole is for. Maybe it's used for practicing tree climbing? No, this is a film crane. It's used to capture footage from high locations. Right now it's not attached, but normally there would be a camera connected to the end. I get it. This would be perfect for scoping out the places you're trying to steal from. Do you think they would let me borrow this? And how exactly, may I ask, do you intend to bring it back home with you? Mr. Edgeworth, you can take the base, and I'll take the top part. Does she actually expect me to help her? If we take it nice and slow, we might be able to make it to your house, Mr. Edgeworth. Not only do you want me to help you carry it, but you plan to leave it at my house? I didn't know Edgeworth had a house. I thought he just lived at the prosecutor's office. <laughs> Alright, stepped on by a mouse. The mount president was found dead in the middle of what looks like a footprint. The rear entrance was forced open. Oh, it's probably that in the combination lock. Uh -huh. The front entrance, which leads to the tower plaza, was locked with a combination lock. At the other end, the lock on the rear entrance, which leads to the Grand Tower, was broken. Now, where does this lead us? <laughs> I know this one. The culprit entered from the rear entrance, right? 
Exactly. And knowing this, we now understand one more critical fact. The culprit must be someone who didn't know the number to unlock the combination lock. Right. If they knew the code, it would have been way easier to enter from the front entrance. Entering through the back door is common sense for a thief. It's much less conspicuous. We can't underestimate a culprit who thinks like a thief. Please keep your guard up. She sure becomes lively all of a sudden when this subject gets brought up. To put it simply, everyone involved with the movie knows the combination for the lock. In other words, it's quite likely that the culprit is someone who is not involved with the film. Combination lock data jotted down in the organizer. Maybe it's the broken horn and the dented fence? Makes sense to me. The dent in this fence, and the broken horn. Neither of these fiends were there yesterday evening. Based on the fact that these two fiends have changed... Ah! Could Mozilla's head have... Indeed, the head that was on the rooftop may have tumbled down onto the ground. This is a new possibility, which would mean that... Yeah. We're just solving this case instantly. <laughs> we may have found the missing murder weapon. Huh? Really? At the moment, I can only say that it is just a possibility. If the giant monster head had fallen off from the studio roof... That could definitely be a murder weapon! Miss Nichols, may we investigate the studio roof? The roof? No, okay, I understand. I love how I just doing this and like, nobody knows he's not a prosecutor right now. <laughs> Go on ahead. But the stairs can be a little bit slippery, so please watch your step. Mr. Prosecutor, I'm going to take my leave here for a bit. There's something I have to check. Agent Lane, I wonder if he's caught on to something. Hmm? Punk kid. Do I voice him or do you voice him? Uh, good question. I voiced him in the past two cases, but then again, you did the Cody voice better than I did. We'll see. When, when, I, when I look at him. Ooh! Looks like a... <laughs> he looks like a Pokemon villain. <laughs> Except he's got a... A cow keychain thing. Yeah. What do you What do you think? Who should, who, who should voice? Um. Try. Let you. You try. Try giving him like the Cody voice. Okay. Move it. What you say? Guess you're just a brat with no manners. Move it. And you're an annoying old man. Quit your yapping already. I'm terribly sorry. Come on, John. <laughs> oh, what were you doing? Who was that? Someone from the police. Why'd you suddenly pick a fight with him? <laughs> that sure was a tense standoff. He didn't budge an inch, even before Agent Lane. Ah, allow me to introduce you. This is John Marsh. He's the lead actor in our movie. The lead actor? Is this child? Hi, I'm Kay Faraday. Nice to meet you. And this is Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Prosecutor? He's a pretty famous prosecutor, you know. He has two games for him, just for him. But he's not wearing a prosecutor's badge. Gah! He's frightfully perceptive. Lotta's, Lotta's just taking like, his senior photos. Lotta's like, oh boy, what a scoop, and... Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, John, it's probably better if you didn't go over there. <laughs> Who's the dead guy? <laughs> yeah. That's certainly not a sight a child should see. However, he is someone involved with the case. I'll need to speak with him later. Do you, do you, later do you, is do you, now. Later is now. I love his theme song. John, was it? Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Hey, old man, you really are a prosecutor. Yes. Hmph, <laughs> old man. Then first show me your prosecutor's badge. I don't have my badge with me right now. Then you can't prove you're a prosecutor, old man. Dah! Hmm, this kid's a tough nut to crack, isn't he? 
Want me to give it a try? Yes, I'm counting on you, Kay. I'm not good with kids, and, K and Kay's got the cute girl appeal. So, John, you're an actor? Yeah, what about it? You're amazing! That's so cool! N not really. Hmm, <laughs> good grief. At least that seems to have worked. Um, about those horns? What about them? John's horns are specially made prosthetics. John plays a young boy who has a special connection with Muzilla. He can communicate with Muzilla using those horns. Right, John? Shut up! Stop blabbering about this stupid stuff! <laughs> You're squeezing the milk out of your carton. Oh, sorry. I think I'm beginning to see the kind of relationship these two have. But it must have been amazing! Star in a movie? And you're only in elementary school! Ah! Uh. He's actually like an adult. D despite how he looks, John's 13 years old and already in middle school. What?! But he's so small, and he's wearing a kitty backpack! The backpack's part of his costume. He's an actor after all. I, I see. But he's still really tiny. That's so acting. what? That's acting, though. Like you are, you are way more likely to find in shows and movies and stuff kids who look small but are older because they're more responsible and can take more yeah. responsibility. It's probably better if you didn't talk about his height in front of. I thought I told you to stop blabbering about stupid stuff. Sorry. It seems the only thing that's not a prop is that milk carton. <laughs> Tell me about the president. <laughs> you know anything? That guy over there. He's the president, right? Yup. Do you know him? Yeah, I met him before. This boy has met with the president? Hmm. That guy makes me sick. Th that's not a very nice thing to say. Why do you hate the president so much? He flipped me off! <laughs> Huh. And now he's giving me the silent treatment. Um, the truth is, the president was involved in the film. The president was involved in the film? What do you mean? He was supposed to have a brief cameo in the movie. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Wait, what movie? What movie was it that um Trump was in for like? Uh, two Home seconds? Alone Two. Home Alone Two. Yeah. <laughs> He's also a president. So what? Well, that's because they like part one of the scenes took place in like Trump's building, like Trump Tower. Yeah, and they were and like, he, and he's like, oh, yeah, you can do that, but I want like a two-second cameo in the movie. There. Yeah, sure. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. He came by to look around the set some time ago. That was when he met with John. Why would the president be appearing in this film? We heard he was a fan of the original Mozilla series. I was, uh, yes, and so we made him an offer. We thought we could get great publicity, you see. He comes on the movie set like he's some sightseeing tour. So annoying. Like he is a sightseeing <laughs> tour. <laughs> well, he probably treats himself like that. Look at me, I'm the president. Ooh. <laughs> John, you really shouldn't say stuff like that. It's not nice. Should it? I guess he couldn't tolerate having an amateur appear in his film. Oh, right. Here. What's this? Ah, oh, was this from yesterday? A photo? Yeah, since it was developed. I brought it along with me. You can have it. I think it turned out quite nicely. So you brought it all away here for me? Thank you so much. No, not really. I just happened to have it with me. Excuse me, but may I take a quick look at it? Oh, sure. Here you go. It's the... <laughs> Roar! <laughs> okay, so I'm examining all this. So he's kind of off balance. And... Um... There's a traffic cone there that wasn't there before. No, that was there. And then this? Yep. Penny's just like, woohoo. Doing the peace sign. Yeah. So this was taken yesterday. Neither the hoof prints nor the body are in it. Commemorative photo data jotted down this in the organizer. This is such an important photo. You know, the crane was over there. Let's go to the roof. May we see the roof? Uh, yes, of course. Go right ahead. 
Ugh. <laughs> That's a creepy head. So this is Muzilla. Huh? Somehow this doesn't feel quite right. See, this looks way cooler. And he doesn't have a nose ring either. Ah, I see. You two aren't familiar with Muzilla. This is Muzilla's original design from 12 years ago. What? Then what's this? It's the gritty reboot. <laughs> That's our take on it for the new movie. We revamped the design to appear to the mo appeal to the modern audiences. Revamped. But it looks totally different. Not really. Yeah, no matter how you look at this one. It's a cow. Well, of course. After all, Muzilla was originally a cow monster. A a cow monster. Having a cow, an animal that humans are very familiar with, turn into a monster? Allows us to question mankind's relationship with nature. That's the theme of Mozilla. I just don't get it. Nor do I. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Are those eye holes the eyes, or do you look through the nose? If you're this is just a giant head. This isn't part of a costume. Oh, it's not? No. There's a heater here. Do you think the staff uses it to keep themselves warm? It's possible. Although it may be spring, it can still get rather chilly at night. Mr. Edgeworth! People are gonna think you're an old geezer if you say stuff like that. Um, I get super cold. <laughs> Even in the best of times, you tend to see things like an old man. Can you at least try to be more cheerful and lively when you talk? Do I really seem that unlively? I don't know, I'm kind of an old woman. I'm like, well... There's a can of paint thinner here. It's probably used for making props. Mr. Edgeworth, doesn't the area around here look kind of burned? It does. This spread out blue sheet, newspaper, and the side of this all look be uh, burned. Hmm. I wonder if this Mozilla's head can also shoot out flames. Well, this old Mozilla design doesn't really look like it could breathe fire anyway. That's not our main concern, but I'm certainly curious. Some sort of wooden stand has fallen over. The area around it seems to be burned black. Huh? Mozilla's head should have been on that stand. But the legs are broken off. It doesn't look like it can be used anymore. Hmm. The broken legs seem to be badly burnt. I think it's safe to assume that a small fire occurred here. A small fire, huh? Is that what burnt and broke the legs of the stand? When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. If Muzilla's head was on the top of the stand... It would have fallen off! So the head fell down because of the fire! Yes, and if that's the case, I also have a pretty good idea of what caused the fire. There's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make sure this doesn't happen again. But I don't think anyone used the heater yesterday. I see. In that case, I wonder what caused the fire. There's nothing of interest to here. Really? There's a box. Just a box. I could probably carry the light stand of this size on my shoulder. Kay, don't tell me you're planning to steal this. Of course not! But if I carry this around with me... I could shine a spotlight on you whenever you shout objection! Man, that sounds so cool! So, when should we start? Never, please. Edgeworth does not like the spotlight. We made this replica of the original Mozilla head for promotional purposes. We'll be using it to let people know that the film is a sequel to the original series. I guess it would be pretty hard for people to tell that they're the same monster. As we suspected, one of the horns appears to be broken. So, did this head really crush the president? It's possible. However, there's something I don't quite understand. What's that? Miss Nichols, this head looks rather heavy. How do you transport it? Ah, uh, it's made so that it can be taken apart. It's not that hard if you know how to do it. But if you don't know how, it can be pretty much impossible, I think. Which means it would be difficult for anyone not involved in the film. When taken apart, would it be possible for one person to carry it alone? Definitely. Given enough time, even I could do it. Muzilla's head data jotted down in the organizer. However, this face is... Mr. Edgeworth, um, 
I feel like I've seen this cow somewhere before. Indeed, I was just thinking the exact same thing. Ba, ba, ba. It was on board the president's plane. And in the storeroom of the black market auction. Who would think that that would be so important? I know! The president's stuffed toy. So, that was a doll of the original Muzilla. Could this really be just a coincidence? Muzilla's doll data jotted down in the organizer. Does this one also have a recorder in it? Hey, bro. I like you his know, music. But, yeah, his music's awesome. Mozilla only exists in movies. For it to become an actual incident, the thought never even crossed my mind. John, I'd like you to cooperate with the investigation. Hmm. In that case, maybe you should make it clear enough to cooperate, old man. Hmm. He's not very approachable. John, if you cooperate with us, I'll give you some delicious candy. You think that'll work on me? Don't treat me like a kid! Aw, even my Candy Crush attack didn't work. What a bummer. Candy Crush attack? Did we examine everything on the roof? Or is it like... <sighs> no, we did. <laughs> we probably have to like present something to Penny. Mod is like, how about you talk to me, y'all? I did not want to go back to the roof. Are you sure about that? He just, he, Edward needed to get his steps in for his Fitbit. <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can examine anything more for the body. Okay, there is more. <laughs> no invisible. Okay. We already did that. <laughs> is it like his shoe or something's burned? Oh, sure. Is it just the footprint? <laughs> There are broken pieces of concrete scattered all around the president. Yes, they were probably scattered about when the ground got damaged. And that must have been when the monster's foot went THUD! If the culprit was actually a monster... Well, we got the footprints data. That's probably all we needed. Hmm, kinda looks like a hoop the way it splits in two like that. Yup, it definitely looks like a monster's footprint to me! And there's even three of them, Mr. Edgeworth. There are no such things as monsters. Do you honestly believe they exist? No, not really. But wouldn't it be cool if they did exist? We're searching for the truth, Kay, not for what is cool. There we go. Investigation complete. Lada's still taking a bajillion photos of one footprint over and over again. That's Lada, though. And with that, this portion of the investigation seems to be finished. So the murder weapon really is... Yes, as it stands now, the possibility that it was the monster head is quite high. So we ended up being squashed by the falling head, huh? Hmm? Interpol. Oh look, it's the uh, it's the identical twins. And two other dudes. Although they're extremely late to the party, the bodyguards of the police have finally arrived. <gasps> Mr. President! They really were far too late. Damn it! Who did this? <laughs> They'll pay for this. I swear I'll make them pay. But you know, this much is enough to put me at ease. The person who did this to Juan. I've already got my eye on a suspect. What? What do you mean? Even though Juan was the victim, he doesn't have extraterritorial rights here. Your country's police have the right to investigate. However, I've already spoken with them. As an agent of Interpol, they're letting me assist in the investigation. So, they've already established a plan for this investigation. And then we never see Courtney again. I've already found my prey. Now it's time for the hunt. Take a look at this. It's a printout from a security camera on the Grand Tower rooftop. Of course! Uh-huh. Th this is... I was literally just like, well, I guess Courtney's not a part of this. <laughs> the camera records people when they get off the rooftop elevator. And guess who was recorded? The president and his killer can clearly be seen. What? Why is Miss Courtney there? So he's saying Judge Courtney is the murderer? Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the goddess of law to you. 
Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze de Best. Could she who hates crime more than anyone have... No. Security camera photo jotted down in the organizer. Agent Lane, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Just now, I heard a rumor at the Grand Tower. Miles Edgeworth, that you are no longer a prosecutor. Naturally, that means you don't even have a shred of investigative authority. So, what would be the point of having a logic battle with someone like you? Hmph. Why would you say something like that? Didn't you also just get reduced to being a lone agent? Hey, answer me this. Even though you've lost your pos position as a prosecutor... And probably your positivity, too. Why are you still sticking your neck into this case? Why do I still continue to investigate? Agent Lane, why are you pursuing this criminal who have murdered the president? Because he's so involved with the president. Because you're an Interpol agent? Right now, I am also chasing after a certain person. Someone in the shadows who was behind the murder at the Grand Tower yesterday. Someone who placed Kay in grave danger. Even now, they are lurking somewhere, laughing at us. We will uncover the truth and bring them to justice. I'm gonna be real mad if, like, the person lurking is just this child <laughs> who has, like, insane... <laughs> skills. Skills, yeah. And a title such as Prosecutor has nothing to do with it. As long as the truth remains hidden, I will continue to seek out the truth. For that is a part of my creed. Ha <laughs> ha! You! You're always trying to be so clever, but you really are kind of an idiot. Hmph. Me, an idiot? How rude. That's the answer I wanted to hear. Alright, I'll play along with you for a bit. I've lost all my men and you've lost your title. And yet, we still continue to investigate. Let's begin this battle of logic between two kindred spirits. You have my thanks. However, I won't go easy on you. I'll definitely catch the criminal who murdered Juan. And I won't let you get in my way. Yes, I wouldn't have it any other way. Let me show you the truth that this wolf has sunk his fangs into. Well, we'll have to do that next time. Because we're out of time for today. <laughs> next time, we get to uncover why Courtney? I, I just don't understand. Why her? <laughs> so, yeah, my main complaint with this case is that the beginning is a little slow. Not too slow though. Okay, well, compared to the rest of the case. The, okay, <laughs> and compared to the one that you love, what is it? Bridge, Bridge to the turnabout, turnabout. It's very slow at Bridge the beginning. Bridge to turnabout. To that it's one. like, whoa, what's happening? Yeah. The time. So the beginning of the case is kind of like it's all right, but not like fantastic. It gets really good. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless. Ooh.